Hey, can you hear me, guys? Mic, mic, mic. Is it working? Hey, what's up, Blands? <laughs> so, today, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about random t-shirt on my desk. About uh, outsourcing, freelancing, um, outsource management, um, as kind of a bridge between uh, both art leadership roles and also what you kind of could be doing what what kind of world you could be in um, as far as art goes how do you get the job just a few people in here right now hey what's up Mordecainer how are you So we've got a little bit of uh, context as like what a lead or a <laughs> or a principal artist might be from last time. We talked about that a little bit. Um, one of the resources, like one of the the main uh, possible outcomes of you becoming uh, you come into a leadership role is there's a likelihood that there'll be some management of outsourcing. Um, so we're going to talk about sort of what kind of things make you uh, particularly useful and positive and what things can help you actually grow into a, a, being a much better outsourcing manager. And we'll also talk about um, resources and kind of how you might go about trying to find freelance work if that's what, what you're, you're interested in. The new GPU is good, man. New GPU is good. It's like uh, being able to play games and also stream at the same time is pretty nice, I have to say. It's been pretty good. So, gonna do a little bit of a little bit of uh, art today, but we're gonna do that at the end. So I want to show you guys some stuff. Um, this is both an art test. So uh, when you actually get um, when you get a company to work for you to do outsourcing, one of the things you end up doing is testing them. They'll make an asset for you uh, to see if they can match style, to see if they can keep it in budget, uh, to see how long it takes. Just, just like an art test for you when you're trying to get a job. The difference being there's probably a, a lot more money involved. You know, if you, you're saying you're going to have someone make five characters a month, turns out that's five artists a month, right? So it's a lot. There's a lot of lot on, on uh, a lot at stake when you do an art test as a outsourcer. Um, so I've I've grabbed a bunch of stuff that I want to show you. I'm going to show you uh, sort of what it looks like to, or what it can look like. Now there's more to this. I'm, I'm actually I only took a small selection of images, but I wanted to show you what it looks like when when I interact with people on outsourcing assets. And it can be less or more depending on the project um, and certainly how much that person really seems to understand what you're doing. Uh, Mortar Caner, I, I mean, uh, when it comes to outsourcing, generally speaking, you have a budget and you're not looking for headcount, you want assets. And so the outsourcing company is the one that will get the people. So I'm saying it would be pro roughly speaking, if you were doing five, five characters a month, there's probably five people working on that, um, roughly speaking, it's like a month per character. Just an estimate. Certainly, if you're making a low poly asset, it's days, not not weeks. So, but what I meant to say there is that five characters in a week or in a month is not one person. That's five different people. So the stakes, like the amount of money involved, is a lot. Um, so there's a lot of pressure on the person that's doing these tests. So let me show you. The test that we did for Gigantic to figure out who we would end up working with um, was this asset. Uh, we gave them quite a bit of other information. Um, it's not quite the same as an art test where you're kind of given just the concept and told to go figure it out. 
um, you know, you're going to be a partner with this person. So you want to try and spend time figuring out how best to communicate uh, with them about how to make the assets you want. So this is the concept. There's a bunch of other material that we gave them. We gave them style guides. We gave them some physical construction instructions, like showing why models were constructed a certain way, where there's hard edges, where there's chamfers. Um, since gigantic art is pretty unique, um, we did our best to document uh, document the, the process pretty heavily. Uh, and we're really open to questions. But so this is the concept, you know, budgets 15,000 or whatever the number was, that's not important. Um, and we gave them the, the the original model. They told them use use as much ZBrush or as little ZBrush that that I did um, from my original mesh as you as you want. So this is the first thing uh, first thing sent sent to them. Now it's probably not going to be in order, so I'm going to have to go. I'm I'm, I'm I'll just screen her. Let's see here. So here's another bit of information, uh, trying to figure out if it should be symmetrical or not. When you look at this concept, you can see there's some stuff that's asymmetrical on the body. You can see these, uh, these little gym jams here, these little cuts. Um, this was a proposed uh, symmetry so that the, ar the chest would actually be mirrored. Um, and I think this is what we actually, nope. And then here was, here was the, the final, like all the green stuff should be symmetrical. This is the kind of feedback you're giving them on a consistent consistent basis. Like, hey, I want asymmetry on these parts. I want to make sure that this part is like the face is one to one to the original model because uh, it's supposed to be the same guy. You know, the things like that are the sort of sort of information you need to convey. So finding a way to package up that information uh, as you start is really, really, really important. And in fact, uh, written and visual uh, feedback is man mandatory for you to be good at. Um, here's some suggestions uh, before we started modeling, uh, how much the concept really matched the style. Um, should this be, should or should the, the helmet be wider? How thick should these plates be? Because they were, technically this is a little bit off style for gigantic characters. So, giving a little bit of extra feedback. Like these things aren't quite right. You know, like you don't necessarily have to paint these completely over. Um, I think that's an important part is to figure out when it's time for a fucking heavy paint over and when it's time for, let me write something for you. Here's an example of a much heavier feedback round. Um, is this a PSD or a paint over? Okay, I don't have the, the PSD. But you can see, here's the model that they gave us, they given us. And you can see I've repainted, I repainted a bunch of stuff. Let me see if I can find that. One second. I'm gonna grab that image from the original. Just give me one second. So here you can see the original. So check it out. They actually pretty much nailed this, but when we talked to them, part of it was, you know, really understanding the style um, and understanding how to make the same choices we did. And we did as much as we could to try and like really give them specific information about how, what's in style, what's out of style. So it's about developing a relationship of working and communicating well. So if you look at this, 
here. Take a look here. So scars, more depth, V-shaped. Like you can see, I went and cut in. I basically repainted them to be V-shaped. If you look at the original, you see how it's just like this. It's like an inset, almost just like it's imprinted on it. Those sort of things are uh, mandatory for you to be able to, to communicate. So while you're managing outsourcing, knowing when to do the heavy paint over and when to kind of reel back and pull back a little bit and just let them do their job is super, super, super important. So you can see uh, the fur was pretty small amount of detail um, or small levels of detail, like the little sinewy edges um, in here, just painting over to clump it up a little bit more. Things that we would do again in style thickness of everything. You can see all the plates got painted over to make them thicker and thicker and thicker. Um, everything is like this. It's sort of like when it is heavy handed, um, you want to be doing your best. Your, you want to interpret what they're doing and understand when things are going to kick their ass. And when you're basically tell them to reset things and when it's pretty okay. Like for me, I know those plates are too thin it's also pretty easy to change them, right? Um, it's not as if I said, oh, you know, the concept, <laughs> the concept, we need you to change the plate configuration completely. It's remove one plate, make them thicker. It's not a huge reset, right? It's not the end of the world to do that kind of stuff. Like right here, there is this one extra plate. We cut it, cut it back. One less plate, one less rivet, a little bit less noise. But all of this is all about learning to communicate visually, understanding, what the artist on the other end of that that feedback is going to need. It's really, really, really important to understand. Like, I think a good outsourcing manager does the job well and understands the pipeline really well. Someone who can sit down and give feedback and know they're not screwing over somebody and just destroying their time. Um, that's, that's really important. That's, that's like tantamount to success. But you can see like layers generally need more thickness. Helmet, feel bigger, rounder on top, more width at horns. Like all that stuff is just really specific. And generally speaking, I would label those on image. You'll see a few more images like that. But you can see how different things could look with just some small changes. The weight of everything is really important. Again, adding curvature, lengthening basically proportion of the blade, the sharp point to the kind of heavier middle in here, right? Like sharper point, more weight towards the bottom end of it, giving it a little bit more, a uh, little bit more aggressive shape, um, increasing the depth in the wraps, just simple little stuff. Sometimes it's little stuff like this, right? Here's, here's feedback that really about how we would construct something and what would it, what it actually look like. These sort of things, you can see like just having that circle inset versus having it sit on top. It isn't that big of a difference, but giving little diagrams, giving little bits of information, um, really understanding how to communicate to the person who's going to go do this work without having to have multiple back and forth. Oftentimes your schedule and their schedule don't overlap. It's someone who's working, they work at night, you work during the day. So you get a pretty terrible uh, back and forth, right? Like having prompt feedback with the exception of someone who's doing a lot of things at once and putting up one model, going to work on another until they get feedback. That's pretty rare, right? One person doing one model a month is most likely. Um, so it's also important to be timely. It's also important to spend that time to communicate as soon as you can, you know, really riding the train of like, Hey, there's, there's something new up there for me to look at. I should go look at it. And if it's not, if it's not a big, big rework, write a few words, send it off, 
do your best to communicate as quick as possible. The model is great from concept. Yeah, it's a, it's a fucking good model. And th this is the, the so Liquid Development did this, and they are the ones that actually do all of the, they do all of the, um, they do all of the gigantic character outsourcing. So this doesn't look like it, but these are, this is actually, this was actually one piece. Um, I did a paint over to make it separate it. But again, it's just about how things are layered, how thick parts are, what what does metal look like versus uh, versus the soft leather bits. Hey, what's up, Alec? What's up, AVBN? Uh, monsters, do you like do you like to just block out hard surface shapes in ZBrush and then trace models over them with Sharp MyMX, or do you try to create final hard hard poly? I very rarely do all like a final real hard surface model like I would not have done all of this model in max the shoulder pad especially there's sorry in in ZBrush definitely wouldn't have done that um, I would take that that block in that I sculpted and do the retopo make it a hard surface mesh and then bring it back in a ZBrush and maybe play with uh, edges a little bit more in a nuanced way right um, weld things together and everything you can do a lot of really clean stuff, really simple stuff in in uh, in Max, and, and especially because of the way you can interact with the stack, um, you can get away with a lot. Yep. Like for this helmet, I probably would do that. I probably would do this this trim in ZBrush, but then still trace it to get that really clean clean model. I mean, I can show you an example of that, not for this particular thing, but I can show you a recent model real quick. We'll go off the rails for a second. What is his name? His name was... Look, that's what it was. So this is a this is a model I did recently that's actually Nope, that's not the model. That's one of the model pieces. Now this I wish I had uh, that consistent depth. So this is actually almost all hard surface in max that I came back and did, like I did this extra little trim layer in here, um, soften some edges, add small details sometimes. But, you know, this is, like if I go back far enough, like we'll go back to this 16, this is number 40, we're going back to 16. You can see I sculpted all this stuff in ZBrush. Um, this is actually the, the this is about the quality that I would do in ZBrush. Uh, like the level of detail that I would do before I would go clean it up in Max. But you can see it's it's a Z remeshed model, so it actually kind of looks pretty clean. Um, these over here are really great examples of sort of how I work. The front of this, I sculpted all of it in Dynamesh. And then when I traced it again later, you can see how much cleaner that got. There's just a different level of control of what the shape is going to be. You know, I can have a slided curve. You know, if I wanted this to be more tension on the top side versus the bottom, it would be a pretty easy shift for me. Um, yeah, I can. I mean, I, I'm not sure at what point. I waited quite a while to do the, uh, the hard surface stuff. And I wasn't going to do it on this model because it's a tiny little Dota dude. Um, let me, let me, uh, I'll click through a couple of versions here. Jeff basically busted my balls. Like the guy that I, I was working with on this, I did the concept. He was like, yeah, I hear you that you don't want to do the, the ZBrush mod or the, the do a uh, final hard surface, but you got some mistake. Yeah, it was pretty far back, I guess.
pretty close here. That was 19. I think it's 20. So if I turn off all my poly paint. Did you guys know? Shoot, I didn't know this until the other day. I found this out. Here's a pro tip. If you want to turn off all your poly paint without using uh, Subtool Master or anything like that, shift clicking on the paintbrush. I didn't even know. It'll turn it off on every subtool. Shift click, just like you do with visibility. She didn't know that one. I accidentally found that out. Genius. I'm a genius. What I do want to know is how long that's been there. And who is holding out on me? Not telling me about that. So this is probably the last version before it was a, a hard surface model. In fact, none of this is hard surface. This is all done in ZBrush so far. So that's what that looks like. And then, uh, and then this is the all hard surface stuff. I mean, I can show you what it looks like. Here, I'll show you the hard surface though. I think the only thing on this model on the left that isn't hard surface is that little grill on his eye. I think. Smash, I'll show you, I'll show you. It's actually really straightforward, honestly. I'll open up Max and show you the I'll show you the actual max mesh. So the one on the right here, you can see I sculpted everything that I wanted to represent. Um, separated all these elements. These are all sculpted stuffs, including the plates. Basically extractions with a lot of trimming and stuff. The reason I uh, I don't try and do I'm not sure what a sticky setting is. I'll just show you what I, I'll show you my models. You're not gonna be all that impressed. <laughs> That's the best part about it is that it's not about it's not about how you get there. It's about how it looks in the end. And I love, I love using Max. I mean, I've used Max for a long time. So for, for that particular part of my workflow, I, it, there just isn't a, I think without all the tools that I use, there, there isn't a, a world where I'll, I'll get fully hard surface in ZBrush. I think the tools are cool. I just, they're just not for me. It's the split between letting letting uh, the smoothing solve your surfaces and uh, keeping it really, really simple. Sorry, Max is taking its sweet time opening up. It's not responding, oh my goodness. There we go. Let me pop open that model. Now some of these I remember I collapsed some uh, some of the, uh, the the stacks, but 
There's a couple pieces that, that don't have. Oh, I did actually do a hard surf to that. So you can see this model in, in particular, you can see how simple this mesh is. Two elements, three elements, four elements, five elements, single planes, right? And these actually were traced right off of, I mean, you could do the, the tracing in ZBrush as well. I use Topo Gun personally, um, but it was traced right off of these parts. Good. These, these elements were just traced right there on the surface. I kind of solved all of the creative process, all of the, here's how the, the plates will interact. Here's how heavy this one is versus that one. Solved all of that in this kind of mushy model, right? You can see it's just a little bit doughy. And I could definitely get closer, um, you know, pulling, extracting out a couple more pieces, letting those kind of smooth, smooth through themselves. <laughs> yeah, the Tough Gun Inclusion Make is pretty good. But so that is the model that I made in ZBrush. Then I brought it over to Top Gun and I traced those planes. You can see it's just, I'm literally just making this super simple, super simple mesh. Um, adding depth with the shell modifier. So this means that if I want to change this guy, I have a very simple mesh that I can edit. Right, so if I, if I show the final result, So I keep that shell. As long as I keep doing this, you can see I can keep editing just on the fly. And when I put that symmetry on, you can see it actually adds in that, that top layer. My chamfer is actually what's giving me the, the um, hardness or softness of the edges. But I can be I can work on this single plane and dramatically change the surfacing. And this is important to me because Editing stuff like this can be real, real finicky. You know, to, for me right now, because I'm letting the stack do all the work, you can see there's like a pretty smooth surface no matter what I do there. I can actually let that smoothing be real nice just by making simple edits like this. And so, well, that's what I, so all my models look like that. They're all these really simple, they're the simplest mesh I can make them. Um, and certainly there'll be exceptions, like uh, I think all of this stuff here. Um, once you, certain parametric stuff doesn't work really well until you edit it yourself. Oh yeah, this is collapsed. And that's, this isn't, like, yeah, so. But the simplicity of these edges, the simplicity of the shape, I can, I mean, that's all that model is. Yeah, that's what I do. That's generally my pipe pipeline for all that stuff. Boop. So we were, oh, good. So we're talking about uh, yeah, P <laughs> pen dragon. That was uh, I actually was gonna say peen dragon. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Oh my god! Uh, the previous software was uh, well. We were using Max when I was showing that model, the low poly model, high poly, low poly. Um, and this is ZBrush over here. Oh, that's ZBrush. So 
So this is just like, again, it's like, where, where is there heavy handed, heavy handed feedback needed? Um, understanding what the pipeline is and what, what things you need to be ahead of and catch when, as soon as possible and what things can be left to later. This is one that I actually felt pretty bad about because that was a whole hard surface model that I didn't like the result of it. And it was a design problem. It was actually something that was, they interpreted it just fine, but it actually didn't end up looking right. So there's a balance, right? There's a balance of how much can you drag the outsourcer, the freelancer through the mud because you gave them bad information. Um, and how much, like, where, what are you willing to, to kind of give up? Because if you, if, you, uh, if you know this works, generally speaking, what happens is there's, you know, you have a certain amount of time it takes to make the asset and you try and write in a little bit of time to bill for just an asset. You build, I'm going to bill for making this character. At the end of the day, sometimes shit goes longer. Sometimes it's actually harder to do um, to get right than easy, like just stamp it out. Um, and so you have to really figure out what what amount of that is OK, because when you're working as a freelancer, every time someone sends you back something that takes a substantial chunk of time, uh, that cuts into how much money you're making, you know? So really communication is key when you're, you're trying to manage outsourcing. So here's another example of like, just communicate as clearly as possible. Um, where hard edges will be. Let's just fuck, let's just like write them in. Let's show them. Um, hard edges on green, chamfers on orange. Simple as it could possibly be, right? Just show exactly what you need from them. Um, and then when it gets to painting, one of the things that, uh, I mean, this is actually a pretty, pretty solid looking base texture for the way that it was being painted. Um, but this feedback was about how to like, especially for the metals, um, really over the whole character, warming up the top, cooling off the bottom, um, and giving clear examples of that stuff. It's really important, really, really, really important. So learning to give great feedback is probably the number one most important part of outsourcing and managing outsourcing, getting getting stuff done. Um, and like I said, that's this. Generally speaking, if you are in a leadership role, there will be some amount of out outsourcing that will be done, whether it's environments or characters. Uh, you know, populating a whole world with props. There's a lot of stuff that you don't necessarily need someone to make. Trash can number six in-house, right? You don't necessarily need someone doing that every day. Um, and characters, if I'm perfectly honest with you, are the easiest thing to outsource. Just, it's a known quantity. The work is... <laughs> oh, is Zambot? Is, is Zambot actually... No. Wait. No, Zambot. Zambot is not a, a bot. <laughs> so. Oh, stretch. Did you guys hear all those crackles? Just everything is just crackling. Like I said, so what I was saying is that character art is pretty easy to outsource. Um, concept it generally as long as there are there are already <laughs> type one. So much ones. One. Ah. <laughs> I mean, Zambot probably will type one, but he's not a bot for the channel. Um. So yeah, concepting a character, it's like. A single, it's a single object that you can say, please just make me this asset. 
I'll give you all the information you need. I'll give you assets to look at, to hit style. All of those sort of things are very different than say, hey, go build me a level, go build me a world, right? Um, props are pretty easy because again, they're single assets that are just like, you know, you something on my desk is all of these things are props, right? They have their own texture. Maybe they have a texture page, but um, when you start getting to like building giant, giant environments, right? You're, it's harder to outsource that stuff because often there's trim sheets, there's textures that are just parts of a building and creating those assets from trim sheets it's just very different. It's very different uh, process. It's not. It's more iterative because you have to interact with it more. So, character art, especially, I'd say in a lead role, you're going to be dealing with outsourcing in some way. If you're not, that's baller, but that's hard. Oh, hey, what's up, Danny? <laughs> yeah, it's a. It's a. It's not a uh, webcam, Danny. It's a. It's a um, DSLR. And my face is out of focus because I'm not sculpting right now. So if I'm like right here, ooh, it's in focus. Right here, not so much. Mm -mm, no, we're blurry. My beard just gets real soft looking now. <laughs> so soft, the beard. So. How many of you guys actually have ever done um, contract work in general, freelance work? Danny, uh, are you are you recording with it? Because most of the like the the whole twenty minute thing is hitting the record button, right? I'm not recording. I'm just using the live view, like remote. Here, I'll show you. <laughs> I'm just using remote view. Which basically just turns on my camera so I can take a picture if I want to. <laughs> if I hit spacebar, bada bing bada boom, there's a per- <laughs> Took a screenshot, took a, took a raw photo. Wait, Danny, you got attacked by a wasp? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, is there a clip of that, Mordecainer? Someone better have clipped it. Where's the clip? Bastards! Aha! Uh -huh. Alright, that's what I thought. Thank you, chat. Let's take a little gander. Let's take a little gander at uh, Danny. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Pensively looking out the corner of his eye. <laughs> you didn't get stung. I thought you were going to get stung. No, no, that sounds mean. But you know what I'm saying. Ugh. Oh my god. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> the base of the drugs? Yeah, exactly. Trouble is what that is. Um, oh, somebody was saying, uh, Pendragon said, but outsourcing can have a negative effect as well. Like what happened with Mass Effect and Dramatic. Honestly, that, that's not, that's not outsourcing. That's, I mean, that's the thing. It's like having a, a quality bar, it, Honestly, the, the, the problems with that game are very specific. Um, that isn't necessarily outsourcing, that's entirely to do with how the game's produced. That's not necessarily outsourcing at all. It's who you get to do that work. It's, it's how you interact with them. How much are you really 
trying to help them. Actually, one of the things that's the, the best thing you can do when you're dealing with outsourcing is spend time trying to communicate not what the specific problem is with the model you're looking at, but elevate the conversation to how to make the choice that would have made it better, right? And so, you know, you can get people to just replicate shit. Actually, it's interesting. One of the things that that I look for when when I'm doing, I'm getting bids for contracting is what my interaction is with people. Um, and there's a, definitely a huge cultural divide between using uh, Indian and Chinese outsourcing companies where you will quite literally get back whatever you put on the page. It'll be a replication of it. It's going to look like what you put on the page. Um, and when I look for outsourcer, like freelancers, um, my number one criteria is that they work the way that I work, which is as a character artist, making choices on once we get to 3D that maybe the 2D artist couldn't really foresee. foresee. Yeah, but that's that again. Again, Pendragon, I, they outsourced the facial facial animations. It's still a question of how all that was handled, right? Just just because it was outsourced does not mean it's bad, honestly. Um, it's really a question of how you interact with those people and how you get them to make choices for you, right? Um, and like I said, there, there's a, a huge divide. Like I I've had times where I've done uh, I've done art tests or I've I've sent out art tests or asset samples that come back and they're one-to-one -to, -one to what my concept was, but anytime that I try and get them to make choices, um, like having that red herring, like here's one part of the model that's gonna look bad if you make it exactly one-to-one. -one. Or yeah, or maybe it's not necessarily vetting the company, maybe it's uh, the person that was managing the outsourcing that wasn't, wasn't able to keep up with the amount or give feedback in a timely manner. So they just had to get things done. Um, you know, that's that, and that blame doesn't necessarily go to an artist. That can, that blame can sometimes be, well, production said, we have five weeks to do something and we actually need three months to do it. So five weeks of work is all we can give you. Uh, you're gonna get five weeks of work, right? Not three months. There, there is, I feel like that, that was a really good example of people just not understanding how those things happen. And I don't know, there was specific people being blamed for it. Just, you, no, you can fuck right off with that. That's not fair because it's not ever one person um, or it's rarely one person. It's budget. It's who you can get at the time. Maybe you couldn't get the best outsourcing. You, maybe, maybe the person uh, who was supposed to be giving feedback had a baby. It doesn't even matter what the story is, right? Like there's like there, there are a million things that kind of keep the, those gears turning and one going off the rails means that they all go off the rails. So in this case, I guess what I would say is let's talk about how you can be better at the job at hand and maybe, you know, remove some of the possible, um, the possible roadblocks that that could cause things like the Andromeda facial animations, you know, the the faces themselves, like were they set up in a way that made any sense? Um, everybody has a, a slice of it. Everybody has a slice of responsibility to make great stuff. And so, yeah, I feel like that was an interesting. That was an interesting. Thing to watch I guess as a developer it's hard to see people get so mad about something going wrong it's not it's it's no obligation it's a sad thing yeah blame Nate that's a good idea he's probably not in here because he's working he's grinding right now Anyway, I was saying earlier, uh, one of the things that you can do to really help uh, help the process along is learn learn to uh, <laughs> grinding on the next failure. Wrong company, wrong company. Nain's a rock star boy. 
Um, but yeah, so I was saying like the difference between culturally how uh, companies companies function often is regional. And when I work work with people, I try and find people that are would be just like someone I would hire that would sit in the room with me. Um, I personally want to hire people that will solve problems first and foremost, and then second, secondly, they'll make bomb characters. So solving problems is more about a mindset of how do I make, how do I make this character the best thing? It's not just being great at the art. It's, it's, it's knowing when the concept isn't going to quite work and maybe you should course correct it. Um, and so I, people that I want to work with through outsourcing are the same way. I want them to make choices and I want them to tell me that they made choices. And so it's, it's different. It's definitely different. You got, you have a very different, um, process when you do that. And I think the, the success that comes from that is that if people are trying to solve problems, what's going to happen is I can give them very specific feedback on how I would approach, a, a shape on this model, like this bill. Yeah, let's let's open epic pen and I could tell someone hey you know what I want I want this to be cut off and I want the actual shape of this hat to be like this and the, the bill should only be this length that's fine they could fix it right but one of the things that I could do instead is instead talk about the weight of that like how I want like that I want the shape of the, the hat to be more like more like this and I want the, the primary weight of this to be about two thirds, like the, the proportions that I would use, the how I would sway from one side to the other and talk about why I'm making that choice, why I think that looks better. And if you work with people that want to solve problems, you would show them this once and then they would try and apply that in other places. Um, things like how thick something should be instead of it being, Hey, just, just, just fix this line right here. It's the example might be this, but giving like general guidelines being like, you know, generally speaking, our cloth isn't actually like cloth. It's not that, you know, eighth of an inch thickness on seams. It's like an inch and a half. It's two inches um, in order to get the style that we, we shoot for, right? It's like a vinyl doll talking about the idea of why you choose those things rather than just doing a paint over redlining it um, makes you a infinitely more valuable resource for them, right? Like having having clarity in the hierarchy of this, right? Having this ear really clearly read as an ear and then this not being the same shape. It's, it's repetition of shapes between two different materials shouldn't be the same. So I should talk about that and explain why I'm doing that. That being said, at the end of the day, you want them to make what you drew and you want to be able to communicate with them about how they are or are not doing it. But the most important thing is that you're, you're doing your best to communicate more than just one. Uh, am I using it's R8, right? Yeah, it's R8. I haven't updated it to P2 yet. I forgot actually completely until I saw that. So general key things to be like to manage outsourcing is really understand the workflow, really understand how you're, how those people are, are being billed. Do you have, you know, do you have uh, iteration written into it? Um, try and elevate the, like escalate the conversation to like the, the looking down at the problem, not just the specifics. So talk about the forest, not the tree. So when we talk about why to change something, try and talk about something that can be applied over the project, not for one specific issue. Um, let's see, what other... Also, it's really important to know when to, to call it, right? Because it's really easy when you're giving feedback to someone to just grind away those pixels, right? And you can get pretty deep in the weeds. It's really easy to get stuck just iterating over and over, um, but finding a way to give yourself uh, 
give yourself notes on when when it should be when you should move on to low poly when you should talk to talk about uvs uh giving yourself a simple checklist of things to check for um one thing that happened a lot on on gigantic was was uh <laughs> there were a couple of non-standard setups where a character would have their texture for the weapon on the body and they were supposed to be swappable um and that ended up being a shitload of work for people because when we outsource it or when we send it out and we gave them all the assets for this character to reference or to use however they wanted um they they saw the weapon sheet actually inside of the character so they put it on the character because obviously that's what you would do right um so making a, a list of things to just check out for yourself are my uvs right is this character uh the right scale can you find all those little things so so that there isn't an extra set of iteration because you screwed up How's the new graphics card work? That was great, man. It's great. I'm, I'm able to play uh, all of the games and also stream at 60 frames. Feels pretty good. Oh, you know what? I'm not streaming right now. Not that I'm really doing a whole lot of stuff. I forgot to change this OBS setting. Um, let's see, let's see. So yeah, so uh, that so outsourcing management might be a separate job. You might actually just do that separately. Um, but also it's part of being a lead often, very often, especially for character work. So it's something that you, you sort of, you'll probably work on that when you get to that point where you are in a lead position, you'll probably already be doing similar things for people on the team um, or for people around the art team at large. Yeah, I know there's a, a P2. Hey, 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 stop. I caught Zero. Here he is. Zero! <laughs> There's a vacuum going on upstairs, so he's losing his mind. Kitty! Here, go to your bed. <laughs> nah, they're uh, vacuuming upstairs. So, all right, so we're talking about outsourcing management, but what about actually freelancing? That's actually totally a legitimate job, right? It's a, in fact, that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I've actually, I spent a few months working for Riot doing stuff, and now I'm gonna spend some time working for ArenaNet doing some consulting. At the end of the day, it's pretty cool, pretty cool job. Um, Definitely lets you be broad in your interests. But I think there's a lot of questions as to how that stuff works. And I don't think everybody really even considers that as an option when you're looking for a job, right? Like there's there's a world where rather than being a like a full-time employed at a game studio artist, you could certainly just be a freelancer. Sitting so this is my this is my office right now. You guys are in my office right now. As freelance artists. Wait, what's the question? What's the question, Pendragon? Your one one side of your model is more pronounced than the other, with symmetry on. I suspect you don't actually have a symmetrical model. You can either use mirror and weld or smart resim. Um, I'm a smart resim type of guy myself. I don't really like mirroring and weld, but it's not really any different. Technically, there's different science involved. But yeah, that's. I'd suspect you're not actually on the center line. 
Do you have to have pants on while in my office? In my office, you have to have pants on, but I don't. That's how that works. <laughs> pants definitely required, Dennis. Um. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, uh. Pendragon. The easy mode. Uh. Smart resim. Oh boy, oh boy. So it's I actually when I use Marie Sam I tend to uh oh this is a dynamish model, I can't do it. Shoot Um I usually will Smart Sam multiple times. I'll mask off the side that I want to keep, and then I'll go to the low res and do a smart resim so it'll snap the verts around a little bit. If it's too far off, you'll get some weird some weird clipping. Um, Kyrix, Kyrix, it's generally this, generally the case, the question was, uh, to get into freelancing, you need to build up a certain reputation. Now, what I'm doing is different than maybe what I'm going to suggest to you. I'm doing, I'm like working, like I'm in a, like working at a studio usually, and I'm doing kind of mercenary work. Um, and I think that generally requires a little bit of reputation. You're not going to just go randomly ask a company if they need any help. And, and get a job doing it. Um, but there's so many companies that are art outsourcing houses that do a wide range of stuff from retopping other people's models to doing the, like, and, and doing the bakes and renders. There's a lot of companies that do, will do stuff like that for you. Um, to doing texture variants, to doing uh, full characters. So, companies like that, there are just tons of them. Sort of worried. Zero keeps circling me. <laughs> I'm gonna lose a foot. At least a toe. There's gonna be at least one toe missing at the end of this. He's kind of wired up because of the vacuum. He's a crazy man. Oh my gosh. Hi, buddy. Hi. Hi. He's like tilting his head all the way back, getting some scratches underneath his chin. Definitely about to, I'm, I'm going to end up bleeding, I know it. You're gonna take Shane's class, Dark? Nice. So I, I'm sorry, I'm reading back through chat because I'm was i I'm behind, I haven't really paid attention. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a list here. Let me just show you. 
this is a list of this is like the stuff that I could find relatively short no, short short notice. Just like spend a few minutes just digging for companies that do just out all they do is outsourcing, and they do it for all types of people. Sorry, I'm missing. I made a started a spreadsheet. I haven't actually put in the the URLs yet, but I wanted to show you just like how many. So I think I got 18, 18 companies who just do outsourcing. So Original Force, Liquid Development, Valkyrie Entertainment, Lasha Digital, Omnon Workshop, Airship Images, Super Genius, Artcore, Airborne Studios, uh, Three Point, Del uh, Digital Air or Art Force, Virtuos, Axis, Digital Shock, Druva, Zatoon, Ananta, Streamline. These are all companies that are pretty big. And have a lot of work <laughs> consistently. Like if you went and looked at any of these, there's a pretty large number of them. Um, and they got to staff up, and they it changes from time to time. Yeah, Art Bully. There's, I mean, I could we could go like I'm sure if you guys all pasted the 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 studio you worked on or you worked with on your last project for outsourcing, we would have another big list of them. I'd be happy to add them on there. But the point though is that those like you have to scale, right? Like when you say I want 30 characters done in five months, there's so many people that could be working for those people to, to actually do some freelance work. Um, and you could just be in your basement working on shit. They'll take junior people. They'll take uh, I would say like there's there are tasks that they will give um, that some of these companies will do things like retopos and baking and doing that stuff. There's a world where you could get your foot in doing freelance work. I started doing freelance work, actually. Um, I actually worked for S2 Games doing creatures for a, a game they didn't ever put out um, and weapon models for a, a mod they didn't put out. Yeah, Liquid. So, yeah, so Liquid Development is actually, they do all of the outsourcing for Gigantic. They did all of the um, Guitar Hero and, and Rock Band stuff. I, I mean, I've worked, I've worked with Liquid tons of times. They're like pretty close friends. Um, just like, oh, I need to, I need to get a little extra scratch. So I'm going to go on, I want to go on vacation. Let's go work on something for a little while. You've been working with Art Bully for seven years? Yeah, exactly. Link to the list. Um, Dynamish, I can I can link it, but I want to I want to actually like I my intention was to make this a link or like links and stuff in this. I haven't done it yet. I will I will make it linkable. But I'll work on this as I go. Um, where's the button for that? And you guys are welcome to add stuff to it if you like. But it's so I guess I'm only I was only making that with the intention to show you like there's a ton of like let's look at a couple of those right let's see if we can find job postings for those now this is this is the case that they aren't necessarily going to they're not necessarily going to post their jobs because it comes and goes right there's feast and famine the great thing about outsourcing companies is that they can have 50 people working at one time and then when the contracts are done when the work is done they go back to their small little group in in-house right um, so they're doing all the scaling for you without you having to feel like, oh, I just got laid off. Here we go. Liquid development, jobs page, 3D modeling, always looking for talented artists, 2D production, animation. They do all that stuff and they're happy to get new contacts. You'll work on, yeah, exactly. Chatamus is exactly right. Um, Just having a, a experience doing a bunch of different tasks, a lot of different types of projects, um, dramatically different work sometimes. 
it definitely will push you into a, a, a world of really understanding how to build assets quickly. Well, yeah, let's look, let's look at a couple more. Let's just see how many of these I'm, I'm shared the link. Let's see. Original force. Now, original force is a Chinese company. of 3d.com yeah let's see careers what do we got so these are uh so here there's film film stuff okay so that's all they have here so you're not necessarily unless you guys are in Chengdu or Shanghai or Beijing but still there's a world where all of those are options all like they're not necessarily going to need you to be in in-house let's see what else what else Valkyrie, that's in Seattle. That's another. They do outsourcing. They also are starting to build their own games. Let's see. Contact. Oh, no job. No job. Oh, always on the lookout for talented artists and developers. So it is the case that you're going to find on most sites, they are going to be open to talking to you. Uh, whether or not there's a new project or not, they're having your name, you'll get talked to at some point. Hypothetically. Our Bully Productions, there you go. Bada bing bada boom. Hard service artists, three character artists. They need people all the time. Uh about Laksha? Um oh what what about Laksha? So they actually own, I believe is it Laksha? Yeah, Laksha owns owns liquid now. They bought them for a shitload of money. Or, sorry, Keywords, the company that owns Laksha, which isn't on that list either, uh, Keywords owns Laksha, and Laksha owns Liquid now? Something like this. Sure, you have to have a good enough portfolio, but the difference though, uh, Keyrex, is that the, there's plenty of people that are learning to do art for games that are totally employable but aren't in a position that they aren't like if you haven't got a job you need that ID to get ID if you don't have a job and you want to find a junior position or an internship the problem is often those jobs don't pay for relocation rarely there are exceptions but it's hard to get the experience without having experience um, and getting to the point where maybe maybe you live in Denmark and there's only a couple of studios. Maybe you live in uh, in Mississippi and there's no studios, right? Um, mobility is key. Being able to go somewhere and and get get work is actually hard sometimes. So freelance is a, it's a great alternative to be able to work at home, get to do the job. So Chatham says he was very genuine. He started with Liquid, and then he, as he got more experience, he did more complex stuff. Yeah, that's generally that's generally a thing. Um, yeah, I mean, just imagine there's everything from you know I, I've I've had I've had like Liquid alone. I know I've had them do um, icons before. I've had them do concepts before. I've had them do props before. I've had them do full characters before. Um, animations, rigs. And all of those things, you might have a particular pro proclivity towards, right? You might be a pretty great rigger, but you don't have a portfolio that shows that you are a great rigger. Guess what? That's a way to get it done. <laughs> you made Rafian instruments? Yeah. If I'm honest, the Rafian instruments were a pretty baller uh, play to, place to start. I, so what have I done for them? I, so I worked on Hellgate London. I did some assets for that from Liquid specific. So I, I'll do outsourcing every once in a while. I worked on uh, Karaoke Revolution. Did some like jeans and shit, texture work. I, I'm trying to think, I can't actually remember all of them. What's up, Harry? 
can't I can't remember. I know I did some league stuff for lock or for for Valkyrie. Dragon Age, Dragon Age 2, Rock Band, Dota 2. Yeah. Cool. Y yeah, there there are no posted jobs for drinking beers and getting weird. But, you know, you probably could find that out, Hodor. But, so, I guess what I'm saying is, uh, a great place to look is, is for outsourcing houses. People that have a lot of work because... When I, you know, I, I Google just like anybody else. I, you know, it's hunt and peck mode with the finger, one finger. And then you look for O, U, T. And then S is always hard to find. And then O. I Google just like anybody else anyway. And the end result is I get the same list as you do if you Google it. And so... If that's the way that I'm finding outsourcing companies, uh, it's there's no science to it. It's just click around and, and check them out. There's probably one nearby you, I guess is what I'm saying. So whether or not you have to work from home, kind of irrelevant. Uh, Alec, I, I always give feedback when I'm on my stream. I trying to keep it relatively low footprint of um, feedback on portfolios on the Pixelogic stream. Um, the other alternative with uh, with outsourcing is not to actually use an outsourcing house, right? The Your network, the people that you know that, you, that you've interacted with, um, generally speaking, are, are going to have some pretty good context. Like, I would prefer... Honestly, if I have a small enough amount of work, I would prefer to send my work to someone who I know we can work through the problems and I can confidently say, hey, you are going to work just like you were on the team. Um, and hopefully I can teach them to make the same decisions I would. Um, and so that's an option, too, is networking and finding uh, finding someone who needs some amount of work done. Right. Like offering offering. Uh, your services even just like doing things like things like retopo and and doing bakes for people um that that's totally legit too in fact i think one of the things that i wish that i had done um earlier is just say hey the technical stuff i'm gonna outsource the technical stuff like the so the sculpting the painting all that those sort of bits um material work i want to do that I want to make all the models and I want to make, you know, do all the big creative decisions. But certainly my next thing when I'm not consulting, I'm I'm absolutely going to outsource low polys, UVs and bakes. Get back all the things that I need to just start working and have all my files set up the right way. And in that time when I'm outsourcing that, it's very specific things that that people need to do right. That, you know, you need to have the right edge flow. You need to do all these, but they're trainable things. And I'm definitely going to do that next time. Outsource the things that I can to remove just like just time from my schedule. All right, I'm going to get another sparkle water. We can talk about this some more. If you guys have any questions about anything we've talked about so far, outsourcing, managing it, trying to find jobs, things like that, let's talk about it. Give me some. The more you guys, the more you guys uh, interact with me on this stuff, the the, the better. Uh, the better our overall conversation can be. So if you have any questions, shoot them. I'll be right back.
Hi, Zero. Do I think freelance with a full-time job? I like jib. Full-time jib is good. Um, freelance with a full-time job is... Sometimes it's fine. I would say I it's feast or famine for me. Every time I decide I'm gonna do some outsourcing, I pretty much can say that I know I'm gonna start crunching. That's what's gonna happen and it's gonna kinda come out of nowhere. What it really requires is you really understanding where you're at in the project you're working on. Um, so your full-time job should be your priority. I think all the times where I've I've worked with people who prioritize the freelance over their full-time job, it just pisses me off. Because it's like, the moonlighting is great, cool to get new work and everything, but there was one thing you signed up for beforehand. So. Don't screw over your full-time job by you being either too tired or making mistakes because you didn't budget your time well and your freelance job has to be done on a certain date. All that shit together is bad. Super bad. It's actually super, super bad. I, I, I have worked with some people where I have gotten so mad. It'll be like me working on a milestone day, trying to get shit done. And I know they're out doing freelance work. I know it just cause I just, I know the person. Um, and that's pretty tough. That's a, that's a hard one to deal with. And like, as, as, uh, as a coworker, it feels pretty shitty. So I would say know where you're at with your, with your, uh, with your work, Hodor. And then just make sure that you, uh, you give yourself enough time on the freelance, give yourself more time than you think you need to. So if it's a, a full character and you think you could do it in a week, but you only have three hours a night to do it, pretend like it's going to take you four more days. Not building them, I'm just saying the amount of time you'll actually be able to do it in. Yeah, it's always so much more time. Let's, I'll sculpt a little bit. Sleep is for the week, yeah. Kind of, it's what happens. When I started as a freelancer, did didn't you fear the company contract? Wait, fear a company contract you for a project? You accept it and can't be able to accomplish it. No, that you have to, you have to be confident in being able to do the job. If you aren't confident in being able to do the job, you should not be looking for a job yet. The confidence in, in what you bring to the table is absolutely vital. And that's not for just, that's not just for contracting, that's for everything. What's with this, what's, did I dynamish this whole shit? Is that what this is? The whole thing's dynamish. Oh my goodness gracious. Hey, what's up, bounch? Brent here does a lot of freelance work, or has historically gone- I mean, you kind of been in and out, right? You've done a- you sort of had a similar, like, scroll through that as me. Sometimes just cruising around, lamping, sometimes working full-time. Uh, let's see. 
when you enter freelance work, they're giving you a set price, or are you setting your own price? So it's it all it's all relative, ABBN. Um, for the stuff I'm doing now, I set the price, but for stuff I've done before, it's like the, this character will make you this many dollars. Um, if you're working for a bigger company, if you're working for like an outsourcing house, it'll just be a, a rate for the the character. Does it require you to use a specific software, or is it cool to use what you know as long as you get it done right and on time? It depends, Crimson, what part of the process you, you work in. Um, generally speaking, when I ask for deliverables, I want them in the program that I'm using. So if uh, if it's a max... Oh, I've, I've got... <laughs> I have the whole half of this model just messed out. Because I'm smart. What happened with your last project, Brent? You were, you were gonna, you were working on that one guy. Okay, so I'm gonna remask this. Oop. Guess we're gonna change. We're gonna add the symmetry back in. I do not ever turn off my perspective except for this one particular thing. This one thing. This one moment, right here. I want to get the center line. I turn off perspective so I don't cast through in a weird way. And it goes right back on. <laughs> Joey, God, Tick, you, oh my God. Unruly Tick, unruly. Or you asked about uh, were there dinosaur tragedies last night? There were not. I did try and go back to the same base that we screwed around with, um, and I got caught. And I almost died. Almost happened. I've been playing a lot, a lot of Ark lately. It's like real bad. <laughs> yeah, Dark, we're on, uh, I think you're on the PvP, you started on the PvP server that we were on, right? Yeah, you were in there when we, we made the boat, the boat operation. Um, they caught me because I went back with the bird, and the guy, just, there was a guy there just happened to be running around on a Therizino. Just happened to be cruising, um, as I rolled up to look to see what was going on. Oh man, I don't even want, let me look. I want to look at what my number is. I, <laughs> I'm sure it's, up. Uh, it's upsetting. <laughs> 202 hours in the past two weeks. That's a lot of time. And 706 total. That's a lot, that's a lot of time. I'm in on that game, guys. Ooh. Dinosaurs. Yeah, Dark, it's turned into a... <laughs> we, we, uh, we ended up stealing eggs from a huge, like a Chinese mega tribe. They have been breeding dinosaurs like crazy they had they had all these these uh bronto these bronto eggs we stole five of them they're all max level with like 750 mutations like they've been bred a lot of times is what that means a lot and so yep that happened <laughs> so we stole some eggs we hatched one it's absolutely absurd what's up sparky how you doing 
<laughs> it's definitely... Shit got serious. Oh, dude, they've been in, but they, they were reckless even. They were, they, they, they're just a commodity breeding, you know, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a cow farm. They had names Brontosaurus and Brontosaurus. <laughs> oh my God. But it has absolutely insane stats, the one we hatched. We also stole hundreds and hundreds of kibble that were left in a box on the beach for uh, imprinting purposes. Ridiculous. What's cracking, Sparky? Do you guys have any questions about outsourcing, freelancing, etc.? Oh, there was a really great, um, did I use clay polish? I, I used, yeah, I used the polish, just like ran it. There's a great, uh, set of worksheets too. If you're trying to do stuff on your solo dolo, Here's a great Excel sheet someone put together to understand what you should be charging. Let me send a link in chat. It's a polycount thread. This is a great, I mean, great resource to just kind of get your brain around how you, how you, like what you should be charging people. Now, there is an amount of, here's what it costs to do it. Here's what my, what my, uh, my expenditures are. And hey, I really just want to start working and I want to do some work for people. But it's a, just a crazy lot of great things in there for you to actually be able to sort of figure out what you should be charging. Here, let me show you. So it's, a, it's an Excel sheet, a big old Excel sheet. That has a lot of very useful functionality. So I'm trying to find Pixelogic Stream again. So some simple, you can kind of see just an example here. I won't bother typing stuff in, right? Um, <laughs> super awesome, make a punch gun. So being able to understand um, what your rate would be what, how much you're going to charge, um, or, oops, so we'll say a character, right? Character, uh, it's a month to make it, that is 160 hours, and we'll say $40 an hour. You can see all of the bits enumerated, how much it costs, basically what things are going to mess you up when you realize, oh, guess what? It was $2,000 for me to license 3D Studio Max because that's my cost now. It's going to cost me this much money to get insurance because that's my cost now. Um, all that stuff 
this I I sent a link. It's just up there. The poly count thread. Uh, super super useful. Very helpful. Um. But letting your letting you actually figure out uh, whether or not you're breaking even from the costs. So if you look for freelance hourly, just understanding. There. Oops. All your expenditures, like basically giving you the equipment to just say, hey, how, how do I know if I'm getting enough money to get by? That's what this is about. It also uh, gives you a little bit of insight as to how people actually do build things. Because there's a lot of shit, like just doing things like uh, traveling for a contract for a contract work. They want you to come in and you have to figure out whether or not it's worth it for you to do it. Uh, that stuff, you know, it comes out of the bottom line of it. Yeah, I, I just posted that. Oh, sorry. Anyway, yeah, this is a super useful... It's not necessarily exactly how I'd build things. Generally speaking, I, I actually just strictly go with percentages over my my salary. Um, but this is... If you really want to get nickel and dime about where you're making money and where you're not, this is a great way to do it. Even has an invoice page. That's you don't understand, but that that's a world that uh that helps a lot. Just having someone show you what an invoice looks like. Because when you're doing your own stuff or you're working directly with people, generally it comes through as as I'm going to uh I'm going to I'm billing you basically. You're invoicing the company, you're saying, hey, pay me. And then this is how they track it too. So yeah, this is a great, great, uh, here. So yeah, go through this. Actually, you know, honestly, I don't even have to go through this. You should just open it up. If you're interested in kind of figuring out how this works, it's just go through the worksheet. And as you go through, um, finding out whether or not it's going to make money for you um, and whether or not you you should do it. Uh, there's also not just money. There's also the intrinsic value of, hey, have you done work before? Um, is the project that you might be working on actually pretty cool? So there's definitely a little bit of of fuzzy room there, right? The whole you gotta have ID to get ID thing, right? In order to get a job, you have to have had some experience. Um, that's that's a real struggle. Anyway, that that uh that spreadsheet's super useful in sort of giving you a baseline, anyway. What are you doing? 
Zero can't be trusted. Something seems fishy back there, but it's hard to figure. <laughs> fajitas. Shit, I want fajitas. Shit. Cat is going crazy back there. So actually, I'm going to show you guys uh, that little maneuver we were talking about. What would a fish man look like if he were wearing armor? What would his armor look like? He would have some sort of like... Let's play around. Hey, do you guys have any more questions at all about uh, Operation Get Money, Take Money, aka freelancing or outsourcing? He's going crazy back there again.
How much does portfolio matter in your experience when it comes to getting a job? Is it like 95% do people even look through resumes and motivation letters? I'm not saying. Uh, it, it, I, I can give you my experience and that is as a hiring manager, I don't look at a resume apart from to see if there's a person that I might know that may have worked with them. I don't care about school you went to. I don't care about the companies you worked at apart from that one specific thing. Um, there, I don't, I'm not impressed by credentials. It's entirely portfolio. Portfolio is the only way you can have a conversation. And then resume is another filter that I can use to make sure I don't make the wrong choices. You know, if there's someone that's worked with, I'll ask people that will work, have worked with people as long as they're people I trust. The industry is small. <laughs> and so the, my number one interest when it comes to hiring people will always be making the right hire for the team, for the culture, for all the things that will make you either a great teammate or not. But yeah, it's portfolio for me. I, I, I don't even consider the rest of it until, until the portfolio impresses me or fits what I'm looking for, you know? Games are interesting because it's not always the case that portfolio is impressive. Sometimes it's the case that it fills the role that needs to be filled. Um, it's hard to have a, a portfolio for a, a tech artist that's gonna blow your mind, right? For a lot of different reasons. They might do cool stuff, but it, it's never gonna look quite the same as someone who made the main character on Drake's Fortune. I also don't read any letters. Kyrix, I don't. Generally, HR will look at that stuff, but I, I don't, I'm not sure that I've ever even read a, um, a cover letter. That's not the same as like if I test someone, sometimes I'll ask for write-ups on tests. Like, tell me about what you did and why you did it. How did you end up with these choices? You know, sort of like an artist statement kind of thing. Those I'll read. But that's because that actually helps me understand the, uh, the motivation of the person. Crazy man, <laughs> this is crazy. Zip, 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 zip. Brrr, brrr. That's what he sounds like. Dead man rip, you have no experience making game models because I'm from Egypt and we have no studio specializing in games. So what do you suggest I should do to start applying for freelance game models? Well you should make some you should make some game models. Are you saying oh you're just saying you don't have actual experience yet? Um Yeah, I mean honestly looking for outsourcing companies that are are willing to um pay people outside of their country, which is most of them. Um do you have a portfolio yet, Dead Man? Because that's the that's the beginning, right? Like having a good portfolio. But 
you know, uh, spend the time to to try and get I'm gonna give this, some, this guy some sweet deep sea gogs. Hey, what's up, Kyle? How you doing, brother? Zizi, what if someone does it really cool, does really cool shit, but not, but it's not very articulate when it comes to explaining their choices? Um, it really depends. Uh, I have said no to people when I couldn't have conversations with them before. Um, communication is one of the most important things that people don't really talk about. Like the two things I feel like you can screw yourself completely on are materials and communication. Like an inter interview is all about how you interact and how much you feel like you'd fit into the group that you're interviewing for. Um, so much of it comes comes down to that that moment of like, well, did you really shit the bed and, and weren't able to talk about the things that make you happy? There have been plenty of people that I've ended up, independent of whether or not I thought we should hire them, we've hired them because Someone else was like, no, 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 we're going to do it. Um, I'm a little bit more of a stickler for that part of it. Cause I, I want, I want to work with people that I, I know understand me and I can understand them. But there have been people who are no question amazing artists that have just been, had a tough time with interviewing. I think it's, th it's not necessarily a, a skill people have, like interviewing is kind of a strange world, right? Because it's kind of like working with people. It's also kind of like, or it's kind of nothing like working with people. And so finding the, the mix for you of how much you're trying to be buddies versus how much you're, uh... God, this is looking ridiculous. Versus how much you're trying to, uh... Just explain your point of view. It's definitely, definitely a tough one. Is he Tracer? <laughs> I was gonna say, I was kind of going with Rocketeer meets Power Ranger, but, uh, Kyrex says, should you delete your older, not so good works from your portfolio and have only the best stuff there or keep some older stuff to show progress you've made? Absolutely delete old shit. Absolutely delete old shit. It goes away. I don't ever need to see your, your old stuff because I don't necessarily know how long ago it was. I'd rather see your current state. If, if there's stuff that doesn't show you, show me how good you are at whatever task you're trying to show. Um. If it doesn't show your current quality bar or close to, it's letting you down and you should be removing it. Uh, I was going the the base model Sparky is a uh, concept, and then I'm now I'm just adding shit. We're kind of making him into a Bomberman type of operation here.
Does he need that much goggle for his ENC eyes? No, he definitely does not. Style. Gotta get your blue blocker style on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was trying to make it look like a little bit like a bomber, little bomber hat. Oh no. Okay, we're good. I actually don't remember where if I... <laughs> uh, wait, actually, maybe it's, it's elastic in... Right back. Are there always art tests in freelancing or do people just give you the task and like get this done? Mm. Uh, if you're an outsourcing company trying to get business, a big contract, right? You know, if you think, you know, if you think the cost to the company to get the work done is less than what it would be if it was direct. So, for example, if a character costs $10,000 for me to outsource it, the person doing the work is going to get less than that. But then the intention is that the person, there's going to be a, a structure at that company to, to kind of make sure it comes in right. So for uh for those purposes, like if you're working for someone else, you're working for like someone like Liquid or whatever, outsourcing company, you wouldn't do the test. The company would do it. The lead for that project would do it. Um, yeah. And there's also a difference in whether or not you're you're uh, getting the work based on reputation or you're getting the work based on their need. So if they don't know you already, then you may end up with a test. Or you might get a smaller, 
smaller little project to work on so they can see what you're doing. Then what's your advice for no a non-native English speaker? Spend time to learn language or 3D is most 3D is definitely most important. You still have to be able to communicate. Uh Blance, what do you mean? I don't know. Uh, contract is like just literally the thing that you're you're signing to get money. I, I guess I'm not really sure what you're saying. I, I'm I'm trying to follow. Up. Can you maybe re? Reform that statement. I just didn't understand what you're saying. Oh, thanks, Joanne. I'm just messing around. Honestly, Joanne, we, we're talking about, we're just talking about freelancing and, and uh, outsourcing as a, as a outlet, as a job. Um, and I'm just screwing around with this model. I happen to be sculpting, but this particular stream, I'm not really, the thing that I'm talking about is, is the, the realness. And this is just dicking around. If you have any questions about that stuff, I'm super excited to talk to you about it. Is sculpting what I mainly do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm a character character artist by trade, but I've, I've sort of moved towards more uh, this 
putting out fires as much as possible. So sometimes it's sculpting, sometimes it's materials, sometimes I'm learning new software. On here I primarily try and stream sculpting things, but on my own channel. Um, yes, I'm so much monsters, like I said, that's me. I also, uh, am a Twitch partner. Currently not streaming a lot of art. I've been, I've been doing, I've been doing the in-between job. Let me pretend like I'm just on vacation mode, so. A lot of arc lately on my stream, but. What's up, JC Ghost? Yes, I'm streaming for I'm streaming for Pixel Logic, but I also stream myself. Like I said, lately, a lot of dinosaurs. Um, th there will be, you'll sign papers that will be agreement on rates. Yeah. We didn't really talk about that, honestly. Um, but when you say contract, it, Contract means a bunch of different things. So in this case, we're talking about contract as you're signing terms saying, I will make this model for you in this amount of time for this amount of money, sometimes with more specificity than that. That's just like, oh, you'll give me these textures and I'll have this source material. But contract can be used as a description for a type of employee as well. So it's like, non full time employee A lot of companies are in a pretty unhealthy practice of like hiring hiring a ton of people as contract throwing a lot of money at the end of the project and then firing everybody at the end rather than just sending the work out from the beginning I guess I mean to say like they'll bring you in full time contract and that means that you your your headcount is something that they will decide if something goes wrong, those are the jobs that will go away first. And certainly at the end of the project, it's likely a contract job will will uh, will drop off. Would I recommend becoming a freelance artist over a com working for a company? I no, I it's absolutely up to you. Um, I personally started doing freelance work and I didn't like doing it initially because I really, really craved like that, the human part of it, like the, I'm in a room with people that are awesome and I want to learn from them and I want to ask questions and I want to absorb it and then I want to come back and show them new cool stuff. Maybe, you know, like that sort of ratcheting up of quality between multiple people is something I really, 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 really wanted. And so I had a pretty hard time right away when I first started out. 
just doing contract work. I got upset. Actually, specifically, there was a day that there was a day that I got a, um, feedback on an asset and it literally just said needs more contrast. And that could be fucking anything. That could have been color contrast. That could have been material contrast. It could have been contrast just between the lights and darks in the eye. I don't even know. It, it was not enough information to do anything. And I had to wait uh, because the person that was giving me the feedback when I was like, I really don't know what you, I mean, I look at the model and I'm just like, there's a lot of places that maybe it could use more contrast, but I don't want to just like turn it up. And I, I was due to turn it in. It was on Friday and it was like the last round of feedback kind of thing. And I sent the stuff over and I was like, okay, do you think you could tell me what you mean by more contrast? Is it this, this or this? Um, like I gave them three different examples and they were gone for the day on a Friday and weren't going to be back till Monday. Weren't going to give me feedback till Monday, but I was supposed to be done on Friday. And so it's just like, ah, uh, I totally, there's like days of my, I mean, and when you're working freelance, like a lot of what happens is that you, you're working on a grind, right? You're trying to get as much done as you can. Cause the more assets you do, the more you get paid. And so then I had a whole weekend where I couldn't start new shit cause it wasn't approved. So then I went straight. I was like, all right, fuck this. I'm, I'm going to get a job. I have to have a job. I want to work in a studio. I want to ask, what do you mean more contrast and get an answer and then go finish it, fix it and finish it and do it right. I've come full circle though. I, I love working from home. I love working on my own now. So I also love the clarity of purpose when you're doing freelance work, right? It's not, I'm not trying to solve for world peace. I'm trying to make sure that the people that are, that I'm working for are going to be happy with what I'm doing and, and, uh, understand that I know what, what, uh, what they need. And, uh, I get stuff done. They prove it. We have minimal conversation when we don't need to, that's pretty good. So it's a mixed bag. It's like, it really depends on your psyche and like what you're ready for. <laughs> yeah. I don't think snarkiness Snarkiness when you're in service of other people isn't necessarily your best choice. Just saying is all. <laughs> I would respond with needs different artists. ridiculous. It's one of the most important lessons I learned when starting out as a freelance artist. If you had known you would do different. Um, that's a good question. What did I learn? doing freelance. I guess I would, one of the things that I think, uh, I would treat freelance dramatically different now than I did then. And that I absolutely would not treat it like a portfolio piece, right? Finding the most raw presentation, the simplest presentation that will like finding a way to automate that. You know, with sculpts, like having 
you know, getting your character sheet exported out real quick, just finding ways to get, like, get in and, and get it to the point where I can iterate and get information from people as soon as possible. Um, I liked to, when I first started out, I would hold it in a box and I wouldn't show it until I thought it was ready to be shown. I think a lot of new artists will do that. I don't give a fuck when you decide to give me feedback now. It's, oh, you, you want to see it 30 minutes after I started? Okay. Maybe you'll get some insights. You probably won't, but here, this is for you. Take a look. Um, being super, super available for showing what you're doing. I don't think that there's, there's a time where, where I would want uh, my clients to not know exactly where I was, what I was doing and share the exact amount of uh, stuff that I had. <laughs> He's waiting to get his pilot license renewed, yeah. True. This man needs, needs to get in there. What time is it? 3.30. We're, we're rolling towards the end here, four o'clock. Um, any of you guys have any burning questions? Anything that you really wish you knew? Anything that seems like a black box? As as much as I can, I would like this stream, this stream time to be uh, illuminating things that that maybe I wouldn't consider. So I that's why I actually, as much as you guys can, if you ask me questions, I want to answer them. Um, I want, like my perspective as someone who's been doing this job for a long time is going to be different than someone who really wants to do it. So what things are hard for you to understand? Why is it difficult to, um, to move forward with where you're at? I think those are the kind of questions I'd love to hear. It's hard for me with many years of distance to fully understand. I do my best to try and just show parts of the industry that I can, but would I recommend providing the client with a live stream? No, fuck that. That's way too much. <laughs> no chance. AVBN, um, yeah, just catch me on my stream, dude. I'm, I'm always happy to give feedback on portfolios, even if it's just chat, not necessarily pay numbers. Um, and even if I'm doing games, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to give feedback on that stuff. Like I said, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep my, my critique feed or my critique footprint low on this stream. But I'm always game for that. That's actually one of the my primary interests in streaming is helping people figure their shit out. Hashtag real talk. Hashtag blame name. Hashtag no, don't do it. Hashtag. Hashtag. How many times did it take before you landed the first freelance job? I actually, I had freelance stuff put in my lap, and it, so I was very fortunate for that. Um, my friend Jesse, who's the uh, co-founder of S2 Games, was looking for people on Polycount to do some pretty low-key um, art outsourcing. Uh, he wasn't my friend at the time, but I met him through Polycount. I, he, sh he saw my stuff and he said, hey, I think, I think you could do something for me if you're interested. That sounded pervy. It wasn't. <laughs> he had me do, he had me do some, uh, 
some textures, some contract textures for guns. Ah, uh, maybe dark. What's a good number of pieces you need in your portfolio? Zenfire, three good pieces is enough to have a conversation. It's a little bit light and you might still get a test, but it's enough to have a conversation. Um, but it's important that they're good. Quality is tantamount to success. Number does not matter as much. Clean QL. Clean coal. Uh, getting over that feeling, there's always a faster way to do something. It's an issue for me. It takes up a lot of time and causes anxiety to get to finish the damn project. How do you get past confidence issues while working so you can just concentrate? Um, clean. I think that sounds like uh, that sounds like you're still stuck in the the zone of like solving problems, learning the software. Solving, learning to solve problems, learning to not get stuck. Um, that shit is, that shit is, that's the start. You get there. And that's just time. That's time spent with the program. That's time spent with the, uh, the tools you need. And there's always going to be more things to learn. There's always going to be more things to make you stumble. But um, there's going to be a point where it, the tool doesn't stop you and you start asking questions that are how do I learn from what I just did not just how do I fix it a lot of people ask how to fix something and not why it needs to be fixed that makes sense so spending the time to learn the software start there get there and then when you're there confidence isn't the problem because then once you once you've learned the tools and you know what the path is from point A to point B Repetition is all that matters. You keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And the confidence comes from you seeing shit that you're doing that is clearly better than before. So a couple of things to do for you um, is spend time on smaller assets, spend time on things that are approachable, do bus, do a single prop. Don't take on a full character. Don't make a full tank, do smaller stuff get stuck like crazy on it, make it challenge you a little bit, um, but mess up over and over. The only way you're gonna learn is from screwing up and figuring out how to not do it again. Honestly, that's, that's where you learn is from messing up. No amount of book learning and, and people telling you about zygomatic arches is gonna make you a great sculptor, but you failing over and over and over and learning each time you fail is what's going to get you there. Study is amazing. Study is important, but it's not the, it's not what gets you confident. Confidence just comes from that exposure, that being comfortable. When I opened ZBrush, I don't really think about the UI anymore. But when I started like ZBrush UI in ZBrush two was a complete crazy mess. It wasn't meant to do what we were using it for. And that was fucking intimidating. Constantly just feeling like I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and it doesn't have any direct analogies and it's hard to get answers from people because everybody else is just trying to figure it out too. So when you get past that, that's when you're going to have that confidence. Learn the tool, then rinse and repeat. Hey, thanks, Toledar. It's very nice of you to say. You're a gem. A real gem. Proper gem. 
It's not vertigo. He must become ZBrush. Yeah, do it. Do well, don't do it. I'm not gonna lie, the gray, like dark gray and orange, pretty played out. I feel like that's like very, it's very Halloween cat, you know what I'm saying? Don't do it, don't be that. Let's make this feel a little bit more structural. Should we give a nose piece? Whoa! That <laughs> took him to a different place, huh? Is this a different channel that, that I stream on? Yeah, I only stream on here once a week. If you... My, uh... My channel is actually there. <laughs> Alright. Good night, Zen. Nice to meet you. Hope to see you back. Whether in my channel or in here. This is a little bit organic, I don't like it. So we're gonna trim it up. Trim, trim, sugar. And then this, I wanna kinda get this into like that shader zone. Get, them, get those blue blockers going. A little bit more tension in that curve. I finally got this playlist, this royalty free playlist to a point where I don't hate it. Right here, now I'm hearing songs and I'm like, okay, all right, you know, it took a while, there were a few, few terrible choices made hastily. Did Shane start using this? Did Shane start using this playlist? He, he, was, he was asking about it. I think he might. Might have. That's all I do. That's all I do is boogie. Ingram. That's it.
I don't like the goggles yet, but we'll figure it out in a second. Get your spackle on. Don't you crash right now. <laughs> oh, I'm still in the crash. It's real. Oh, we're good. How often do you ask for feedback when you're when you're doing freelancing work? Is it something you expect? 
Uh, I do. I, I guess it's just like a metering. You kind of spend some time. Um, spend some time like with the problems that you're trying to solve. Like, are you trying to solve the proportions of the character? Once you solve that, maybe it's time to get feedback. Verify that you are on the right track. It's kind of just like being responsible. It's like you got to manage your time and you don't want more feedback than you need because sometimes it's not the right time. You know, you, sometimes you, you don't need uh, heavy criticism of what you're doing. You just kind of want to know, hey, does this feel right? Especially early. I try and minimize my, my footprint for them. The less that they, that I ask them questions, the better. Um, and the more that I come to them with solutions and not questions, the better. Um, but certainly when you're, you're starting out with people, you really want to make sure you're communicating well. And one of the things that helps you do that is talking quite a bit right away. As projects go on though, you can generally get away with less and less. I would say that applies to really any any 3D job, right? Like right away, you should be asking questions and you should be comfortable with the idea that you you don't know what you're, is expected of you necessarily. If that makes sense.
Yeah, Gemini, I'll, I'll redo the topo later. Much later, but for now. For now, we're getting pretty good results for the type of shenanigans we're up to. Sorry, I haven't sculpted for a little while, but kind of like low key, not arting so much. And so I just kind of got excited. I've mostly just been playing Arc, so this is like. Just, just getting like getting it and messing around. It feels good. It feels good. Mufune, hey, who are you on poly count? Oh, okay. Fair enough. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed the stream. We're about to wrap up anyway. Anybody have any questions at all? Any questions about outsourcing, about freelancing, about getting jobs, having jobs? Breaking records, taking names, etc., etc. Oh shit! Shh! It's not under there. <laughs> Whoopsie! I didn't clear my mask when I extracted that. Fine, we'll do it live. We're good, we're good. Nothing's wrong. I don't see nothing wrong with a bum extraction.
When doing belts and whatnot in ZBrush, what's your approach to keeping things relatively structurally sound with mass, edges, etc.? I, I actually, all my belts will probably be in max or my, it'll just be a polyplane and some modifiers. Tiago, I would happily do that. Actually, my first stream, Tiago, I actually went over my original portfolio and how to make it better. And I think there's some pretty good insights as to how to make it pretty okay. Um, especially for an entry level portfolio, like the way, the way you present it, the way you think about things is super important. Um, and it's a little bit much for a conversation at the end of my stream, but I could, uh, maybe, maybe I could find a few portfolios I think are dope for next time. Bomber is real. Uh, what? Well, asked a question about ZBrush for hard surface and missed the answer. I don't know what question you're asking me. But my answer will probably be I don't use it for hard surface. Let me scroll back. Complex hard surface mining, like Torfric, take longer in ZBrush. Gonna be done the same. I do all hard surface modeling, honestly, outside of ZBrush. I, it, the the way that I interact with it is different. So this is what my hard surface models look like. Oh, I closed Max. I can't show you. It's in the stream earlier. I think before you were in here, clean. For stylized weapons, like in World of Warcraft, create the low poly and Max, export to ZBrush, add cracks and all that stuff, or Sculpt, high poly, and ZBrush and Retopo. I would do the, I do the exact same thing, stylized or not. I sculpt in ZBrush. I find all the good shapes and proportions and use all the amazing things that ZBrush has to offer um, to really make good choices and do the creative part. I think ZBrush is incredible for the creative part. And I think that the choices that you can make uh, as far as technical sides of things go are a little restricting for me. So I don't really enjoy the technical part of it much. Um, so what I do is solve the creative stuff in ZBrush, and then I move to the technical modeling program, Max, Maya, whatever, to uh, to do the, the uh, hard surface final stuff. If that makes sense. I showed that again earlier on stream. I showed my process. Um, for this Slark, you can see the Slark set I had done. So here's, oh, what just happened? Oh. This is just strictly a hard surface, or sorry, uh, strictly sculpting. All of this was done in ZBrush. So planning everything out, getting proportions and working stuff out. Uh, and then I take that and turn it into something more like this. But these were these all started from from uh, from a sculpt. In fact, I think quite literally all of the parts on this model I extracted off the base model basically. I suspect you'll see a mask on there somewhere. No, I don't see one. But it was just like take this, extract it out. Oh, there was the tail back there was just masked. But that's what I do. That's the process that I go through.
I don't think it's going anywhere. But yeah, that's my process is the same for stylized or realistic or whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, just taking all of those. Basically, what I would encourage you guys to do is use the tool that you are fastest with for the part of the process you're in. So for me, I know I'm faster in Max when I do hard surface meshes. The combination of Top of Gun and Max is a great combo for me. That's not the same for everybody. Um, some people have a hard time with 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 uh, 3D model, 3D modeling programs. So. Uh, the encouragement I would give you is rather than look at my workflow and say, do what I do, I'm not actually telling you to do what I do. I'm showing you it because I want you to see what my process looks like. And you can look at your process and say, maybe, maybe some of the things that I do, you could, you know, you could add to them, but I'm by no means saying, Hey, look, do this just like me. I'm not doing that. I'm actually just trying to show you all the tools. Um, and you should be the one that chooses Here's how I'm going to do this. When you start at a project, how do I model this piece? How do I get it to be a final asset? What's the easiest way for me to get there? What's the fastest way? What's the best looking way? Sometimes those are all the same. Sometimes they're not. Uh, what time is it? I'm a little bit over, but I was a little bit late. It's, it's whatever. Um, let me just read through real quick. ZBrush hard surface. Talked about that. Tips for doing clothing. Sculpt a lot. Archidev. <laughs> There's not really a specific. Here's a here's a solution for doing clothing. Um. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Any retapo? It depends on my Tiago. I think that's a little bit long for right now. Um, I'd be happy to talk about that a little bit more later. But uh, retapo, this like the the goal of it is important to know, right? Like, are you doing it for sculpting? Are you doing it for sub D's? Are you doing it for a final model? Um, they're different, so. There's different solutions there. Jordan, I'll probably stream on my own channel tonight, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do art or not. Um, I've been working on, <laughs> but you guys saw the cloud, the cloud strife I've been working on, right? I'll show you. I've been working on this. And I want to keep working on it. I want to turn it into a, a print for my desk, but um, there's a lot of dinos that need to be tamed. So we'll see if I can convince myself to do art again tonight. So I've been working on this on my stream in between dino time. <laughs> but yeah, if you guys, uh, yeah, follow me on, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. So much monsters on either. Um, here I'll turn on the, <laughs> I want to hug him. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Yeah, so I've been working on this. Yeah, it's easy. I've got a form one. I've got a few things on my desk here. I printed. Actually, you can't really see them, but here's a, yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you one. I'll show you one thing. So this is my little Paco ball. Oh, sorry, I gotta get my camera. Have I made zero in 3D? No. So, put that there. Let me gotta focus it. <laughs> I made Paco into a ball. He's very huggable. I wanted to make him into a stress ball. <laughs> uh, 
And this is a, a this is also a three doodled version. There's a few things on here. This is Roland's head. I, it's actually there's automotive primer on it. That's why it's actually clear resin. So if you look at the bottom, it was clear resin. Um, and I, I'm using automotive primer to kind of smooth it, and then. Um, made this Motiga. This is actually a cast of it. Oh, it's too dark. Do I have another one here? I have a few of this one. Uh, not on my desk. I'm doing it in the back. Anyway, I printed a bunch of shit. This is a. This is the. Uh, it's a white resin, so it's a little bit blown out. I'm sorry. No, this is not a ball of clay. It's a, it's actually a it's a form one print. Can't you see his face? Come on, really? You thought, oh, hi guys, hi. <laughs> hey, hug me. I want a hug. So the, the the Paco isn't cleaned up. It's just it is what it is. I don't know what, what's going on here. Oh my god. All right, I give up. Joeception. Whatever. We failed. All right, you guys. I'm out of here. I'm Joe. So much monsters. Follow me on Twitch. On that Twitter, etc. I'll see you guys next week. Oh, it's Joeception. Oh, bye.